This time we are visiting a town for the very first time and you never know what to expect from retro gaming stalls, hidden comic book stores to hidden gems. All this, this time we're picking in Peterborough. Hello again folks and welcome back to another live game hunting episode. And this time we are headed to a city which I have never been to before, Peterborough. As this week we are going to be picking in Peterborough, but we are not going to be alone. We're going to be joined by my good friend PS2 Many Games, who will of course be looking for PS2 games for his collection as he is aiming for a complete PAL PlayStation 2 collection. Yes, he is even crazier than me. Now, when I go to a new city, I do look up a little bit of what to expect, but this time I haven't really done too much research. I'm going in pretty blind. All I know is there is a pretty good retro gaming store on the market, so I'm hoping to come across that, but sometimes it's just fun to have a surprise when you pick a new city. Just before we head off to Peter, I want to remind you folks, if you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button and please subscribe. As I put new videos out every Saturday live at 5, as well as bonus content throughout the week, and I really want you folks along for the ride. Now, let's get picking in Peterborough. Here we are then in Peterborough, one of the newest cities in the UK. Previously a part of Northamptonshire, now a part of Cambridgeshire. Coming into Peterborough into one of the most dystopian multi-story car parks of all time, you'd be misled into thinking it's a very ugly city. But as soon as you get into the city centre, you are met by some absolutely beautiful architecture. And I'm hoping today we'll find some absolutely beautiful games for the collection. First part of call is of course a charity shop and the inevitable wall of DVDs. Sadly nothing really to write home about here but this is the thing you always have to look through these DVD absolute behemoth walls. Something I'm seeing less and less of randomly a couple of years ago you could not go to a charity shop without tripping over a Wii U balance board. Sorry a Wii balance board and here we have one now but there is I think there is more Wii balance boards in this world than it is people but something that is getting harder to find especially in charity shops is vhs players i'm looking for a decent sony one i think when it comes to these old vhs players it's all about the name and it's also quite interesting to go through some of these bonus leads this was a really big charity shop and it did have an upstairs which did have one of the best staircases i've seen for a while but when a charity shop actually markets itself as a retro store, it's normally an alarm bell for me as it just means they're probably going to charge a premium for some of these retro items. I was hoping for video games. Unfortunately, we did get PC games, which aren't really something I pick up. I did check behind these to see if there was any other games other than PC, but sadly it was only PC. Also, I thought taking a further look around the store, there was this glass cabinet of dreams at the back, which has some quite interesting bits in. Obviously, these were the most precious things in the entire store and hiding at the bottom was one lonely mega drive game i did pass on this one just because like a lot of these american sports games are a dime a dozen so i did pass on this mega drive game this time in the cherry shop on to the next cherry shop and again a veritable wall of dvds I just think a lot of people just take their DVDs into charity shops, myself included, just to get rid of them now. In this age of streaming, I think less and less people are buying DVDs as well as PC games because, again, this is another charity shop that was full of PC games. I just think none, barely any of these hold any trade-in value, so I think they just end up filling the shelves in the charity shops. But when it comes to these walls of DVDs, always worth having a look through as you never know when you're going to pull up a bit of a gem, such as this Lenten particular copy of Coraline, one of my favourite kind of aimed at kids films, even though I think this film is actually fairly disturbing, and Lenticular 3D, totally complete, yes I'm going to pick this one up for a pound, if for nothing else for my wife, I thought these were pretty cool, these kind of bonus bags of DVDs, just a big bag of DVDs for a cheap price, all he knows what kind of genre they're in, but today I did pass them up. Another charity shop and yet more PC games. It seems that Peterborough is PC game mad. Game I never really kind of realised was released on the PC. Toka Touring Car as well as Colin McRae Dirt. Which I never really made the connection was released on PC. But those PC gamer boxes are very, very ugly. So I did leave all these PC games behind. Talking about boxes, but this time box sets. One of the best things to pick up in charity shops or car boots to trade into CX for in-store credit 
is box sets because some of these DVD and Blu-ray box sets do trade in for a decent amount of money. Sadly, I wasn't able to find anything today that did trade in for decent money. Don't get me wrong, some absolutely fantastic films. The Final Destination films still live rent-free in my head to this day. But the thing is with these DVD box sets, you kind of have to scan them and get to know the right price. At the end of the day, you, sometimes you'll pick these up for a pound, they'll trade it for two pound, etc, etc. But it's all about that grind. If you're trying to build that CX credit to put towards retro awesomeness. One thing we are definitely seeing less and less of though in charity shops is VHS tapes. These are slowly disappearing into the dumpsters or just away forever and not surprisingly at five pounds each i did decide to pass on these but what do you think how many more years until the vhs tape either disappears or starts to become more collectible let me know in the comments down below Again, a couple of years ago, you couldn't go into a charity shop without finding Nintendo DS games, but they seem to be getting rarer and rarer. This one was quite intriguing, My Sims Racing. I don't know, this might be an underrated kart game. I did decide to pass on this one, but let me know. Is it an underrated kart game? Let me know in the comments down below. Continuing down the road, we came across this small independent comic book store, Close Encounters. And this is just the perfect comic book store, just packed with action figures, comics, magazines, everything you know and love and expect from an independent comic store and i was blown away instantaneously by the amazing selection of NECA tmnt turtles in time figures these are one of my favorite lines of the tmnt figures and i love these so much i think arguably still turtles in time is the very best turtles video game of all time and i think undoubtedly these are the best TMNT figures of all time. NECA absolutely yeah, smashed it with these yeah. ones. I was very tempted to pick a lot of these up, yeah. but no I was on a bit of a budget. Around, so it turns out this comic book shop was obviously a converted house. Upstairs had a couple of rooms, including a couple that were no entry, which I presume is probably where the shop owners lived. But through this door was an absolute cornucopia of comics, just boxes and boxes and boxes. And these are the exact kind of things I love to go through. And you can see here, one of the best ways to buy comics is to go through these pound boxes. And right at the front was a Modern Warfare 2 comic, which I never knew existed. I'm not the biggest expert on comics but when it comes to comics i know what i like i normally judge a book by the cover literally if i see video game based comics especially when they are a pound i'm gonna pick them up so you see here we've got modern warfare 2 and gears of war gears of war is one of my very favorite game series and if i can pick up some gears of war comic for just a pound you know i'm picking them up for the collection great bargains back to the charity shops when i was going through this first charity shop i didn't think there was much here on the top shelf they had a couple of playstation 2 games just hiding as pointed out by ps2 many games because he will never miss a playstation 2 game trust me if there is one ps2 game in a charity shop he will find it out but here is something i do not see very often new old stock this brand new and sealed wii classic controller now for my money this is one of the best ways to play any kind of retro game on the wii and any game you can use a traditional controller for like i'm not the biggest fan of motion controls so if i can use a good old-fashioned joypad that is what i'm going to use this was 10 pounds brand new and sealed let me know if you were to pick this up i think it's worth picking up because these things are getting harder and harder to find Next charity shop, even more DVD box sets. Unfortunately, Captain America one isn't worth very much, but it's kind of cool. But, you know, if you're going to go for the Avengers DVDs, you're probably going to get a box set of just all the Marvel films in general. This is a film I don't think a lot of people talk about these days. A Scanner Darkly, definitely one of Keanu Reeves' more underrated movies. A really cool art style on this one. If you haven't seen it, I definitely recommend checking it out. Nothing else really to see here, unfortunately. Heading down the road, we came across this pawn shop. Or so it appeared. When we went inside, it was actually nothing nothing inside i have no idea if that's like some weirdly rare ps4 game it had nintendo switches and the first of many of the xbox series s's like seriously these are everywhere at the moment they are getting super cheap but i am more of a physical rather than a digital gamer our next charity shop was the British Heart Foundation, which, correct me if you think otherwise, I think is one of the more expensive charity shops. That Mashbox set was quite interesting and did have some FIFA games up here. £1 for FIFA, that's not too bad, but at the end of the day, if it's not the present FIFA, it's pretty much worthless. Lots of DVD box sets in here. I was quite tempted to pick this film up here, Steve Austin Damage. I'm a massive Steve Austin film fan. Never seen this one. Let me know in the comments if this is a good Stone Cold movie. 
Maybe one of the reasons the British Heart Foundation is a little bit more expensive is I do think they do a bit of research into their games. Let's have a look here. We have Time Splitters Future Perfect at £7. Not the worst price, you know, it is a very good PlayStation 2 game. And again, Time Splitters here for £5. These aren't necessarily bad prices, but at the end of the day, if I'm looking in a charity shop, I'm probably looking to spend a little bit less. But one thing that was really cool about this charity shop in particular was the fact they had a free for a pound on DVDs and CDs. If you don't know already, I am aiming to make a kind of complete video game movie adaptation collection. Assassin's Creed is one I don't have in my collection. Also, if you did not know, I'm a massive metalhead, and seeing a really good supply of metal CDs in this store was a really good supply. Prize that you saw, I had some Sepultura there, some Mastodon, some other CDs, just flicking through these, some really random big box PC stuff, such as Science Explorer. But if I see free for a pound, I want to make sure there's nothing I miss. So I kept looking through here and found possibly the greatest metal band of all time, a Slayer CD I don't have in my collection now. Some of these CDs may be able to resell on eBay for a little bit more, but mainly I'm just looking for CDs for my collection. I'm a big collector of CDs, and I just like being able to pick them up cheap in cherry shops, because at the end of the day, most CDs you can pick up super cheap on eBay, but then you have to pay postage. So if I can get them cheap in store, like negating the need to pay for postage, that's a bonus for me. You can see I'm getting more and more frantic here with my scrolling through here, as I'm just trying to find one more bit to pick up. That is an absolutely incredible Machine Head album. Of course, I have this in my collection already. I think I picked it up the day it came out. No idea what Fudge Tunnel is. Absolutely incredible name for a band. Still furiously flicking through here to find out one last CD. Soundgarden is tempting again. It's already in my collection, but free for a pound is an absolutely incredible deal nonetheless. Here we go then, six CDs and DVDs for £2, an absolutely incredible bargain. And I think it goes to show you can still get a bargain in a British Heart Foundation charity shop. Heading down the road, we finally found a retro gaming store that I've been looking forward to all day. This is Get The Game on Peterborough Market. I was super excited to get in here. My first go-to whenever I go to a retro gaming stop is a glass cabinet. Straight away is a really nice Halo 4 Xbox 360. The absolutely beautiful Jungle Green N64. 140 quid is actually a really, really good price for this. Some 2DS, some minis, some Xbox 360s, just a little bit of everything. Some really nice consoles here. And on top as well, some really nice box consoles. Straight off the bat, get the game look to be an absolutely incredible retro game shop. There were so many incredible box consoles here, including an Evercade Versus, which I've been tempted to pick up for the longest time. But without a doubt, I think the best box console here is just coming up here, just below the GameCube, which sadly was unboxed, but there was some incredible GameCube games here, was this Slim PS2 Silver. This thing was a thing of absolute beauty, and I was very surprised that PS2 Mini Games didn't pick this up in a heartbeat. Even though this was a relatively small market stall, it was absolutely packed, ceiling to rafter, just absolutely tons of games. And it's the kind of place I just love to dig through, to go into these glass cabinets to really see what you can find in here. Like we've got SNES boxed, so much boxed Nintendo cardboard awesomeness. And everywhere you look is just something else cool. Like we've got loose games, boxed games, cartridges, just a little bit of everything I love. And this is what I love about these independent game stores they just get as much stock as possible you can just dig through looking for retro gold like so many n64 cartridges so many snes cartridges just so much awesome nintendo retro power but it wasn't just awesome Nintendo Retro, we also had stacks of Sega Retro, including one of my favourite consoles to hunt for, the Mega CD. Now, I did have most of these games already in my collection, but one of the games which I've been looking for for a really long while, it's not an uncommon game at all, it's one of the most common Mega CD games, it is Road Avenger. Now, this is only a cheap game, and it's only £10 here, I just want to check this is complete. Bear in mind, these cases are a nightmare to open, because they open two different ways, but I open it correctly yes it is complete with the manual as i said not a rare game not an expensive game but because it is a mega cd game it's getting harder to find so for 10 pounds i'm definitely picking it up another game i've been trying to find for a long while primal rage on the mega drive everyone's favorite dinosaur based beat em up unfortunately it wasn't complete otherwise i'd have picked that one up but definitely good to find a mega cd game i needed
Another console which is getting harder and harder to collect for is Nintendo Wii U. Again, unfortunately, I did have all of these games here. Another <laughs> console for Nintendo is getting harder to collect for, the GameCube. Again, I think I had most of the games here. It just goes to show a couple of these Nintendo consoles are getting harder and harder to collect for. And I think in the coming years, the original Xbox will be harder to find games for. Again, most of these games I already had in the collection, but trust me, these are the consoles that it's getting harder to collect for check out this massive Wii selection absolutely incredible and this was super cool a boxed and complete Dreamcast controller there is something beautiful about the simplicity of the Dreamcast packaging I just love the blue and white the simple logo it's such a shame this console didn't do too well commercially and I'm glad to see it's getting more and more love in 2023 so that was Get The Game in the heart of Peterborough on the Peterborough market. And this is what I love about these independent game stores. No two stores are the same and normally they are absolutely stacked with stock. And that's what I love. I love just digging through places like this and just finding those hidden gems. Even if I don't pick very much up, it's just awesome to be able to pick up something from these stores because these are the stores that just need your support. And I just, I, I just love going to these independent stores just to see just stuff you've never seen before and i just love how every single one is different if you are in the peterborough area or anywhere within traveling distance i would definitely recommend heading to get the game just to go through the incredible incredible amount of stock they have a fantastic independent store Heading down the high street onto another pawn shop and one thing that never ceases to amaze me is how incredibly cheap the digital Xboxes are becoming now. 150 quid. I reckon when these are under £100, they're nearly worth having just to use them for Games Pass. But heading in, I was not really prepared for how much games were in this store. And to see this many PlayStation 1 games in a pawn shop in 2023 is a genuine surprise. And I think this is one of the cheapest GameCube games I've ever seen. Yes, it is a FIFA game, but for a pound, if I didn't already have this in my collection, I'd have probably picked it up just for the case. It was a GameCube game for a quid. Yeah, that is literally half the price of CES. As you heard PS2 games say there, a lot of these games were really underpriced. And when I go into a pawn shop and see these games cheap, it means I'm going to have to dig through a little bit more because there was a lot of games here. And if they are underpricing games, I don't want to miss out on a bargain. And jumping into the Xbox One section, I've never played this Fast and Furious Crossroads game but for £2 for an Xbox One game, which looks interesting, for, you know, it has a hovercraft chasing cars on the cover. How can you pass it up for £2? And if I'm finding cheap games, I'm just going to dig deeper and deeper. So I was quite intrigued. There seem to be some really, really cheap Xbox One games here. So let's see what games we can find for cheap. Yes, a lot of these are like £10, £15. It's some of these cheaper titles I'm really looking for. Kind of one or £2 games because... Maybe you're not going to be able to trade them in or sell them off for a lot more. But if you can add some cheap Xbox One games to the collection, it's worth checking through these large selections. Because I'm always looking to build my Xbox One collection. If I can get games cheap, like here we have Rainbow Six Siege, not bad at £2. But I think we can go a little bit cheaper. Let's delve in a little bit more. Here we have it, the cheapest Xbox One game I've ever found. Yes, it's NHL 15, but it is 50p. Also, this store literally had a bargain bin absolutely full of UMD movies for the PSP. I keep getting tempted to pick up these UMD movies, but they do take a reasonable amount of space. I actually built a little pile here because these were all super cheap, but I did decide to pass on these just because space is at a premium. At the end of the day, I could fill that space with PSP games instead of movies. Heading over to the glass cabinet in the pawn shop. I don't know what it is about pawn shops, but why does every single one you seem to go into have fake PS2 and PS3 controllers that are just made to look like the real thing? If you saw my previous Platinum Project video, you'll know I picked up an official PlayStation 1 controller brand new in the box. But there always seems to be these fake ones in pawn shops, as well as many, many Xbox One consoles. So many Xbox Ones. Also, a little further down the road was this vintage charity shop. And one of the things about these vintage and retro shops is they normally charge a premium for the item because they know people are going in there literally looking for retro items. But from the outside, it did look pretty interesting. And heading in, there was some very cool stuff. 
but the question is will a lot of stuff in here be overpriced there's only one way to find out let's jump straight in a couple of video games nothing really to write home about cd-rom game here age of mythology very cool unfortunately they are priced quite high i think let me know in the comments down below if you think some of these vintage and retro gaming store charity shops sorry do charge a little bit more this was quite interesting the top 50 32 bit game for window once again very exciting but a little bit overpriced in my mind looking around a cool version of the original vhs game atmosphere as well as this really nice crt tv carrying on round here we've got loads of old records but then we have some wrestling vhs tapes again a lot of these are quite tempted to pick up but the number of times i've resisted collecting vhs tapes again i'm just not going to fall off the wagon i am going to stick to my guns and not pick up these wrestling vhs tapes even though they are super duper cool i do think a lot of these have made their way onto the wwe network of course there will be some that never will but i did pass these vhs tapes at three pounds each i did comment on this nice crt tv as i walked around but missed this real ghostbusters visor which is possibly the most 80s thing i've ever seen i'd have been very tempted but for 20 quid that's what i mean by some of these vintage and retro shops charging a premium with all those vhs tapes over there i don't know why they put this like smaller tv with the vhs and dvd player this vhs dvd combo would have gone really nicely with that crt tv and do you know what i was quite tempted by this but again i did pass final thing while we're in here we did gloss over it earlier this absolutely terrifying et this is literally the thing of nightmares and yeah it's terrified it can stay here forever what i love about picking a city for the first time is coming across gems like this turn your trash into cash shop or tight tick unfortunately it was closed this was a small precinct we came across near the end of the day they had this small shop in here called the rift which had an incredible selection of board games card games and some really cool retro toys we didn't get very long in here as they were kind of closed up it was getting later into the day but there was some really cool vintage and modern action figures in here like some of these bucky o'hare ones were super cool i've never seen them before loads of, like real ghostbusters stuff just some really cool stuff in here some of my favorite action figures the kenner jurassic park figures even some gladiator figures some really really nice stuff in here some of the best stuff was some of the box stuff like i said there was a couple of video games in here there's really cool bits here these boxed and complete bucky o'hare figures i've never seen these before these were super cool i'm not sure if these were modern or retro but they are really really nice i just love the kind of 80s aesthetic of these figures and hiding at the top here are some of my favorite retro figures that i've never seen before box complete these original power rangers megazords these were super cool they were pretty pricey but can you put a price on this retro awesomeness? As we were heading back to the car in the multi-story car park of Dystopian Nightmares, we came across the crossover we never knew we needed, the lush Mario Bros movie crossover. I, I am lost for words. So there we have it then, folks. That was my first time in Peterborough, an absolutely beautiful city and a fantastic place to pick. Now, back to the games room for them pickups. Here we are then back in the games room from Peterborough and yes, that was a fantastic city to pick. The first time I've been and it will definitely not be the last, I'll definitely be heading back. There was some amazing stuff there, some amazing stores, a good variety of stores from charity shops, independent comic shops, independent gaming stores and some of the best pawn shops I've been to in a long while. Of course there was a CX store there, but you will have to wait until a future episode of the Crazy World of CX to see that one. Now let's get into those pickups. Yes, I am indeed one of those people who still pick up DVDs in 2023, either to trade into CX or for my own collection. But this time, this one is for my wife's collection. This is the Coraline DVD Special Edition, and it includes both 2D and 3D versions of the film you can watch on your Blu-ray player or DVD player, but without the need for a 3D television. That is because, first off, the ticking cover of his pickup. When you open this one up, it does in fact come with a couple of pairs of 3D glasses. Yes, you can watch this on your traditional TV in that weird red and green 3D way. This is fully complete, picking up for a pound. This would trade in for about a pound at CX, but this is one of those weird DVDs that around Halloween trades in for a little bit more. 
Like I said, I still buy DVDs in 2023 and I also still buy CDs in 2023. That's because they're the most convenient way for me to listen to music in my car. So when I went into a charity shop and saw they had free CDs, DVDs, etc. for a pound, I wanted to make sure I picked a couple up. That's because whoever took a lot of these CDs in must have had very similar tastes to myself, being a metal and punk fan. So the first thing I picked up was the Assassin's Creed film on DVD. That's because I still haven't seen this one. I have no idea if it's good or bad, but I am trying to go for a rather extensive collection of video game based movies. So to pick us up for 33.3 pence reoccurring is a bit of a bargain. So again, it's the CD. So the first one I picked up was this Deftones CD. Massive fan of the Deftones. Then the most metal band of all time. We have Slayer, one of the best recent metal bands. Macedon. Remember, these are all free for a pound. Absolute classic. Sepultura. And just because I'm a fan of retro PC gaming. And I just like this as a rarity, this DK, my first amazing science explorer. I just kind of love these old educational CD-ROMs. I think they're so weird and they're such a zeitgeist, like when you used to have an entire encyclopedia on your PC and for free for a pound, I used to grab one last thing, so I grabbed this. One of the best things about game hunting in a brand new city is you never know what to expect. And it was a really nice surprise when we came across that independent comic book store, Close Encounters. Now I'm far and away from an expert in comic books, but mainly if I buy comic books, they will be video game crossover comics. So when I saw these following comics for a quid each, I knew I wanted to pick them up. Because I never knew there was a Modern Warfare 2 ghost comic. And for a pound, this one was a no-brainer. I also bought the alternate cover of this one as well. Now I did know there was a Gears of War comic and the artwork on these is absolutely incredible. I think I have comic book issue 10, 11 and 12. I love some of the like, advertising on this like Spartacus, a very very underrated series and finally this one here is an absolutely fantastic cover with the best back Arkham Asylum. Picking these up for a pound each is an absolute bargain. It's just one of the things I love about picking, finding these really exciting independent comic book stores. Speaking of small independent stores, Get The Game was an absolutely fantastic place for retro and modern games. I also went there looking for PlayStation Platinum games, so if you missed that in the episode last week, please go back and check that out. But I did pick up one game which wasn't on the PlayStation, and that is... Road Avenger for the Mega CD. I have been after this game for a long, long while. Yes, I know it's not the rarest game on the Mega CD, but trying to find a box and complete copy of this game has been an absolute nightmare. I know it's not exactly a rare game on the Mega CD, but Mega CD games in general are so hard to find. This was the only game there I think I needed for my Mega CD collection because it is hard to find Mega CD games, and it's always a pleasure finding one I need for the collection in a small independent store. Whenever I do go to a new town or city, I always try and find these smaller independent stores. As, as the high street is struggling, these are the stores that deserve and need our attention. Yes, I go to CX, I go to Game, I go to a lot of these charity shops, but I'll always try and spend money where I can in these small independent stores, as they are the ones that really need our support. Now it's not very often I will pick up games from pawn shops, but this pawn shop in Peterborough, which is a bit of a tongue twister to say the least, had some of the best prices on Xbox One games I think I've ever seen. I think this could be the cheapest Xbox One game I have ever bought. It is NHL 15, but you know, I, I don't mind an ice hockey game, I like a good fight in between my sports, but this was 40p. 40p for an Xbox One game. I'm sure it probably doesn't trade in for anything at CX, but 40p, I'll happily add it to the collection. Secondly, we have a game which for £2 I think is an absolute bargain. I'm not expecting this to blow my mind. I'm expecting this to be just some fun Sunday afternoon rainy day hilarity. And that is the Fast and the Furious Crossroads. Now this looks absolutely hilarious. And I need to make a bit of a disclaimer here. I have never seen a Fast and Furious film. All I've seen is the trailers and I've got the gist. They are car chases, they are explosions. On the front of this we have a car being chased by a hovercraft. For £2 in a pawn shop, if the game has a car being chased by a hovercraft on the cover, I'm going to pick it up. 
We're on to our last pickup this time, and I want you to let me know in the comments down below, would you have picked this up? It is one of my favorite things to find in charity shops or car boots. It is new old stock, and it is this Nintendo Wii official classic controller. This thing is boxed and complete, and will probably stay in the box for the rest of all time. For my money, this is one of my favorite ways to play Wii games, is using this controller. It is such a kind of flashback to kind of, it's a, it's a better SNES controller. Yeah, roast me in the comments. This is a fantastic controller from the Nintendo Wii. And they're getting harder and harder to find. I actually have four of these for when I play Wii games with my friends. So this one will be staying in the box. But would you personally have picked this up for £10 in the charity shop? I think when it comes to new old stock like this, this is the kind of thing that maybe in years to come could be worth a little bit of money maybe not for me it's just a very cool thing to have in the collection and it's a real zeitgeist and a throwback to the glory days of the nintendo wii there we have it then that was peterborough and i hope that shone a spotlight on some of the best independent stores that that city has to offer let me know if there's anywhere i missed in peterborough i'll be definitely heading back again as it was an absolutely amazing city to hunt for games and retro awesomeness in i hope you've enjoyed this video if you have stay tuned for a crazy world of cx episode live from peterborough coming soon hit that like button subscribe and as always keep playing the game see y'all soon